Today I'm going to show you how you can turn this into this using that. Thanks for watching. In today's video, I will explain to you how this printer works, uh, how resin printer kind of works, uh, also why this machine is different from all of the other resin printers that I've seen and that I've tested so far, because all the way up until now, I have not had a really enjoyable experience printing with resin. It's always been messy, it's been really frustrating to get prints to stick to the build plate. And with this Haygears Ultracraft Reflex, that is a thing of the past. I've only had successful prints with this thing so far. Uh, today we will also print something. I have already started, of course, so uh, over here you can see this is a KC Highlights uh, light bar by Night Customs. You can find this at my mini factory, for example. You will see a link to it in the video description box where you can check it out. I also have the covers of it so you can uh, install uh, an LED and keep it uh, positioned over there. And what we will do in this video is we will also print some lenses because this thing of course needs some lenses and this Haygears Ultracraft is the ultimate printer, I think, to print some transparent lenses for this light bar. So that's what we're going to do today. There are several different uh, kinds of resin that you can use for this uh, Haygears printer and they all come with a, a tiny tag installed so the printer can read what type of resin you have installed in your printer and adjust all of its settings accordingly, which is really smart. Uh, these are proprietary bottles. So uh, this is, for example, this is the gray that I have used to print uh, that uh, light bar. You can also see that I really needed to put a ton of supports in it in order for this to be a successful print. And I have kind of used the entire build volume of the printer in order to get this thing printed. You will see some footage of me uh, printing this light bar and also of curing it because this was really a daunting task for this uh, 3D printer, but uh, it did it with no problem whatsoever. What you end up with is uh, a piece that I'm not sure if the camera will fully pick it up, but it kind of looks like it is injection molded. It is a really perfect, super smooth surface. And also with this uh, gray ABS-like resin, it has some uh, mechanical strength to it. So uh, great print so far. And right now the only thing needing to finish it is those uh, transparent lenses that we are going to print right now uh, today. So let's see how that goes. Lots of different resins are available, so you will find them in uh, several different colors for uh, modeling purposes. So for example, a white, yellow, a magenta, a cyan, and a black. Uh, then what we have printed over here, this is like an ABS type of gray. And what we will print today, like I said, is this transparent PAT10 resin. Now, what makes this printer different? Because there are so many resin printers out on the market, and none of them have been really uh, appealing to me. Uh, all the way up until this one. This is basically a touchless printing system, so you don't have to keep a level on, for example, the level of resin that you have in your tub. It will automatically fill it, and that's also what makes it easy to, for example, be confident about printing stuff that is big like this, because this support, I needed to angle this diagonally two ways, just to use the full build volume to create that uh, light bar for my SCX6. Because I have currently test fitted it on my Gladiator, but this light bar will be fitted to my SCX6 Shorty, which I will be finishing up. If you haven't heard of Hay Gears before, neither had I. Usually they make printers for the dental industry. So if you're a dentist or if you're like a tooth technician, something like that, there is a big chance that you have heard of them. Uh, they have like a whole online system as well that is based on dental technique. And right now this is their first consumer grade 3D printer. And by kind of a downsizing from uh, industrial grade to consumer grade, it kind of gives you an idea of what type of quality to expect. All right, let's check the hardware part of this video first, which is this printer. You can tell that the hood opens, it stays open as well, so this is all very well supported. In a lot of cases, when you have a resin printer, you have a hood that you need to take off and put aside, which of course makes it really prone to damage. And apart from that, I think it looks and it feels a tiny bit cheap. 
uh, not in this case. This is all, like I said, it's all really high quality uh, metal casing, super big touch screen. It all feels and looks fantastic. If you're not familiar with resin printer, resin printing uh, works as follows. You have a tub in the bottom, underneath that tub uh, sits uh, a screen. So this is a transparent bottom tub. So if I were to take this out, you can tell that there is a screen in the bottom and that screen is transparent. Below that sits a UV lit uh, screen. So this screen in the bottom, this will cure certain parts of the resin uh, according to your slicing software, then what needs to be cured, uh, it will cure that and then it will pull the build plate out. So this will lower itself down. It will pull the build plate out once it is done curing that layer and then it will sink itself down again, submerge itself into that uh, tub, uh, curing the next layer. So with that, you get a certain buildup of layers, each of them cured by UV light underneath that resin tub. Now, what that means is that, for example, this print over here, this was over 3000 layers of resin. So every time the build plate goes down, uh, it cures an extra layer. So it builds up. So it kind of pulls this out of that tub of resin. In a lot of cases, you need to keep filling this manually. And that is really annoying. And it can also cause a print to fail. And in this case, with this Hager's printer, it will fill this completely automatically and you have no worries about pulling out a successful print. Another thing that it does, it automatically levels this build plate so it automatically senses that all of the distances to the bottom of the tub are correct for you to pull out a successful print. If you are familiar with resin printing, you always need to wait for that pop that indicates that your print is safely pulled off of the bottom of the resin tub. With this one, I've never had it fail so far. Perhaps in the future it will, but so far it's been really fantastic. Uh, another thing, you have this uh, screen. It is connected to Wi-Fi, so it is completely wireless. This is currently pulling off files from my computer, which is located on the top floor uh, through Wi-Fi, which also works completely flawless, really big, uh, clear screen. It's really easy to operate. If you have a computer, you use Blueprint as your slicing software, which is the uh, free Hager slicing software. And it's really convenient and easy to work with. Super easy to orient your prints, very easy to create supports and super easy as well to get it sliced and to get it all prepped and set to send it to your Ultracraft printer. This is a 6K resolution printer, super high definition. Uh, we print layers in 50 microns in this case, but you can set all of those things up using Blueprint. Over here you see kind of like a shutter. So this bottle, I put it upside down inside of the printer. You can tell that there is a closing valve underneath that first cap. And then if you take the second cap off, whatever resin you have left after printing, you can pour that back into the bottle. But first cap, if you take that one off, you put the bottle upside down inside of the printer, it will automatically fill the tub and you are ready to start printing. A couple more features is of course this locking system. This will ensure that you can take the tub out in case you want to clean it, in case you want to change out colors, uh, stuff like that. Really easy, you put it back in, pull these two tabs down and you are good to go again. There is also a probe. This attaches magnetically in the back. And what this does, this one senses the level of resin. So this one is really important that you take care of it. That you also keep it nice and clean. Uh, so after your prints, make sure that you wipe it down using some isopropyl alcohol. And the last thing I want to show you is the build plate itself, which is really heavy duty. So this is all metal, it is perforated. So uh, the resin seeps through it easily and you have a perfectly level surface and a perfectly leveled print every time you want to print something using this printer. All right, with all that stuff explained, it is time to insert the bottle of resin. So I'll just pop that in the back over here. If you want to change out your resin, there is a little button on the side which will keep the bottle lifted from the tub surface. So that's really convenient as well and uh, makes it again a bit less messy to change out between resins. All right, you can tell over here, this is what we're going to print. It also says what type of resin. So the printer has read the tag that is inside 
of the bottle and with that it knows exactly how long it needs to cure every layer and what it needs to do in order to make this resin perform the best way possible which is great it will also keep a log of all of your printing so in case you want to replicate something exactly at a later stage you can see what you have printed you can also see what type of resin you have used it just makes everything a lot easier now let's check out what uh, we get if we press print you can tell that we can check uh, the file as well so we can have like a closer look see some of the parts also have a look at uh, some of the supports it's just really easy to see what we're going to print right here you can also see how many layers we're going to print in this case we're going to print 410 layers we're going to use two hours to do that and we're going to use seven gram of resin which is definitely not a lot now the minute we press print you will see that the shutter over here will lift it will open the bottle it will fill the tub with resin you can tell that the shutter is open so with that as well the resin is allowed to flow out of that bottle it will fill that tub up until the probe says that the level has been reached and once that time is there then the build plate will get lowered the temperature will be adjusted because it does that as well and we're off to yet again another successful print now while this is filling itself i will close the uh, the hood on it just to ensure that there's no contamination and there's as less dust as possible landing inside of that resin because you really want to work as clean as possible the tub is currently filled to the point where it needs to be where uh, you want to start printing. I can hear that by the shutter being uh, lowered and thus the flow of resin into the tub being stopped. I can also hear the build plate being lowered. Let's go have a quick look to see what that looks like. You can tell it is currently sort of getting accustomed to being lowered into that tub. I think in this part of the process it is also getting uh, auto leveled. So you do want to keep that hood shut, we will do that in a tiny bit. You can tell over here as well it is monitoring the resin temperature to make sure that everything is optimized before it is going to expose that first layer of resin to those UV rays from the bottom. I think this part of the process is always super funny because you can just see the resin sprouting out through the top of that build plate and it is just really cool to watch. Also really dumb to watch it with top open. So right now we'll close it up. I have the Blueprint app on my phone, which means that I can just monitor what's happening remotely. So I don't have to be here. I can turn the lights off. I can leave my workshop and I can do something completely else and I will get a notification once my print is done. Went out, ran some errands, did some grocery shopping, done some other stuff. And right now I'm back and the print is done. So you can see it's actually hanging over here. Now, if you want to make sure that the rest of the resin, the majority of it drips off, it's pretty simple. You just unlock the build plate, you pull it out, and then you hang it at a bit of an angle. And you can tell that more resin will drip off into the tub. Just let it hang like that for a couple of minutes. After that, you remove it, we put it on the bench, and we use this thing to stab the items off. This is the first time that I print with this transparent resin. And so far, just from what I can see from it still hanging from the build plate, the result is extremely impressive. So this really looks like glass. Here we go. There, that was it. So over here you now have the completed print, which is eight separate parts, so eight separate lenses. Currently this build plate is of course also nasty, so this is completely covered in resin. We're going to take the majority of it off using this uh, paper towel. After that I'm also going to drain the tub from the resin printer, remove the probe, get all that cleaned up, uh, getting it ready for the next use. What I've done right now is I have uh, filled this tub with uh, some isopropyl alcohol. In my case I am using uh, what they call carburetor liquid. Now this is basically the exact same thing as isopropyl alcohol. So you can tell where it says technical alcohol 99.7%. 
And trust me, that 0.3%, you're not going to notice that. I dunked the part in here, and what we're going to do right now is we're going to run this through the washing station. So we're just going to push wash, three minutes, 180 RPMs. I'm thinking we're going to do a tiny bit more. We're going to do uh, five minutes. And then that's it. So right now, this is just swooshing around inside of that tub. I'm going to do something else for five minutes because I'm not going to wait for this to be done. And it will make a really cool noise once it is done washing it. Can't wait. And we're almost done in three, two, one. Super fun. Um, now, make sure that your valve on the bottom, that your tap, that that one is closed. Uh, also make sure that the air valve on the top, the air in switch, that that one is opened because otherwise you will have an accident. This valve over here and then uh, your tap, that that all faces the same way. And open the top air in switch as well. And then after that, we're going to open this one up. So, and you will hear all of that isopropyl alcohol draining out of the top bucket into the bottom bucket. So what you will end up with is just the part in the top. And then of course afterwards this isopropyl alcohol in the bottom tub, you can just use that for your next wash. Super nice quality. So. These are the washed parts. This is the transparent resin. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove all of those supports. It's a pretty easy process to just break these away from uh, what is your print. After that, we're going to put all of this into the curing station. The last part of our printing process is this curing process. Now there's a couple of different settings on this machine. One of them is the regular curing, which I'm doing right now. You can also introduce some higher temperatures but this is a dual wavelength UV curing system. So you don't need to introduce any of the higher temperatures in order to get your part cured. Um, having a UV curing system is, for me, it's great because uh, I'm not sure if you can see outside right now. This is basically what my entire winter is going to look like. So uh, letting your parts cure naturally in sunlight is not an option, at least not six months of the year. So this thing is basically the exact same as a microwave. So it has like a spinning platform in the center. I put my uh, lenses on that platform, so they're going to cure right now. What you will find, I have heard with this transparent resin, is that the first 24 hours after curing, they can appear a tiny bit yellowish, but that will clear off uh, after the first 24 hours, then they will appear crystal clear. So I'm really curious how this will come out. Uh, again, you can figure out what this thing is doing on your Blueprint app. This as well is uh, connected through Wi-Fi. So if you just want to walk away and still monitor the progress, you can do so on your phone. Now keep in mind as well, I have even printed this one vertically. You can get this to be like a lot clearer if you would clear coat it. This is not cured for a full 24 hours yet after taking it out of the curing machine. But I think that uh, you can already see that this is just going to be a perfectly clear lens to put inside of that KC uh, Highlights light bar that is designed by Knight Customs. There will be a link to the Hagers Ultracraft 6K resin printer in the video description box, along with a link to their washing station and a link to the curing station. Of course, I will also put links there to the Axial SCX6 Jeep, uh, whether you want to have the Jeep Wrangler or the Hancho. I will also make sure that I have linked a playlist to my Axial Gladiator build in uh, the video description box. You can check that out in case you are curious how I built that thing. This will be a range of parts that I'm using for my Axial SCX6 Shorty, which will be completely overhauled and revamped and uh, we'll get like a fresh coat of paint and of course a ton of 3D printed parts. So keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions about any of these products, then let me know because then I can just explain that to you in one of the upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. We're back. We're back on.